Okay, so it's always interesting watching a historical, you know, piece come to life, right? Because I think when it gets really fascinating is when you find out about people who you've never heard before. You know what I mean? Like these moments in time that aren't often depicted. Like, you know, there's loads of films about the First and Second World War. You know what I mean? There's a lot of films about, you know, the Tudors and, you know, things like that. But with medieval, we get something really interesting. Like, it's about a Czech hero, a legend, who yeah, never heard of. Never heard of. It is directed by Peter uh, Peter Jackal, who um, also wrote the screenplay. Um, it's a story by, um, I think, his dad and Peter Bock, right? Um yeah, the film is produced by Kevin Bernhardt, uh, Kasayan Els, and Jackal. It is executive produced by Delphine Pierre, Stuart Manachil, uh, Peter Jackal Sr., Arena Fraser. And Martin J. Barab, uh, associate produced by Pam Dixon, Daniel Jaros, Alina Jakalova. Music is from Philip Klein. Cinematography is Jesper Tofner. It's edited by Stephen Rosenblum and Dirk Westervelt. Casting is Nancy Bishop and Pam Dixon. Art direction is Yuri Stenward. Uh, set decoration is from Barbara Bokarova. Costume design is Katarina Mirova. Uh, we got effects, hair, makeup, all of that jazz from Sasha W. Eiser. Daniela Girakova, Jamie Kelman, Rene Stegeskal, and Ivo Stragmula. Our cast, which was very impressive, we've got Ben Foster as the man himself, Jan Zika. Um, we've got Sophie Lowe as Lady Catherine. Uh, Michael Kane as Lord Bolsh. Uh, we've got Till Schweiger as Lord Rosenberg. Uh, Roland Muller as Tork. Matthew Good is King Sigismund. Uh, we've got Carol Roden as his brother, King Wenceslas the Fourth. Um, we've got William Mosley as Jaroslav, who is Jan's brother. Uh, Werner Dayan as Ulrich. Vinez Kiefer is Conrad. Alistair Brammer is Freddy. Magnus Samuelson is Lars. Christopher Reif is Mick. Guy Roberts is Cyril. David Bowles is Giovanni. Jennifer Amon is Barbara. Jan Buda is Matthew. Um, yeah, I mean, it is a very, you know, it's a really, you know, impressive cast, right? So the gist of the uh, gist of the film is this um, it's about Jan Zika um, and it takes place in the so-called 
high middle ages and tells the story of the birth of a great warrior and brilliant military leader who defended everything he believed in. At the turn of the 14th and 15th centuries, Europe was experiencing a cold and unfavorable climate that did not favor even less demanding crops. Crop failure followed crop failure, leading to famine. The Black Death from 1347 to 1351 was followed by further epidemics that paralyzed the whole of Europe. It was not a good time for the common people who were tormented by unnecessary uncertainty, which was also true for King Wenceslav IV. In the early years of his reign, Wenceslav was an active monarch, but over time he came into conflict with both the domestic nobility and the Catholic Church. The clash with the church culminated in 1393, when the archbishop's servant, John of Nepmond, died during an interrogation. A year later, the local nobles captured their king and imprisoned him in Wildberg Castle in Upper Austria. Wenceslas' brother, Jan uh, Zolkeski, son of Charles IV and Elizabeth of Pomerania, freed Wenceslas, but the pressure from the disgruntled nobility persisted. After a while, the king had no choice but accept their terms. However, this was only part of the problems. He had to deal with, a ra- deal with around the year 1397. Conflicts with his half-brother Sigmund of Luxembourg were also escalating. The lands of the Bohemian crown were in fact ruled by Henry of Rosenberg the richest nobleman of the kingdom, and even as a result of defending his own interests, the people were thrown into a cycle of unimaginable tyranny and violence. The year was 1402, and the time demanded a hero who would be a new hope, not only for the common people, but also for the reigning king. Jan Zika was hired to protect with his retinue an important advisor and supporter of the king. During the ruthless assault on this important man, he demonstrated his strategy and combat skills, which did not go unnoticed. He was soon called into the service of Wenceslav and accepted another delicate task. He was to kidnap Rosenberg's fiancée, Catherine, at this time, at first, he, he, um, this did not seem to be a particularly difficult task, but meeting the beautiful girl sparks in the violent Jeanne the hope of a forbidden love. Inevitably, he becomes involved not only in high politics, but also undergoes a test of his loyalty and his own strength. Jeanne's mercenary values are shaken to their foundation, but he has no choice but to fight. Passion, guilt, lust, and revenge become the driving force behind his determination to fight for equality and for the common people and for justice. I mean, that's a lot, right? But it, this film, man, it, it, it really does invoke a lot in the viewer, I feel, right? From the giddy up. Right, we have this ambush, and you know, because well, really, it's around these two popes, right? The French name a pope, Rome name a pope, which I had forgotten all about. Right, watching that, and then you just remember, you're like, oh shit, I remember hearing about that. But it's not some again, it's not something that's like overly talked about and shown. And so, um, yeah, Wenceslav has to go, like, the aim is to go to Rome to, you know, help consecrate the real, like, who they believe is the real Pope, right? But, you know, his man is ambushed, and Jan 
protects him. And just this opening battle, jeez, like we see a lot. It's crazy. Like the special effects are insane, right? There, there's a bit, just a man's hand is just crushed and we just see this crushed hand and you're just like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? People's getting their faces smashed with maces. Just all, like, the frenzy is just palpable, right? Now, there are bits in the film which you do kind of wonder about. It's like, you know, people in armour falling in rivers, you know what I mean, and not drowning. Now, to me, it's not complete plate armour, but you do kind of look at what they're wearing and think, I kind of think you're going to get dragged down, but... Other than that, you know, we, we get this mix of story and, you know, faith and just all of these things that are tied together and are really bringing this whole thing to life. And it is fascinating. It's really bad. Like there's intrigue, there's deception, there's double crossing. It is extremely extremely satisfying, like you're gripped all the way through, you know, gripped all the way through, it's, uh, it's impressive storytelling, you know, and the cast, right, I, I will say this is one of the best performances of late that I have seen from Michael Caine, like he really did, you know, bring something to the table that was like, yo, god damn, that was good, that was really good, like, sometimes you watch Kane and he's just, he just seems like it's just Michael Kane. but here, you know what I mean, he, he really um, gave us something, right, you kind of, like, he inhabited the role of Lord Bosch, you know, it was, yeah, really good. And just everyone, you know, everyone just gives us a lot, you know? Like, Sophie Lowe makes it believable as Catherine when she she believes in God and, you know, that the, these things are done for the right reasons, which, you know. <laughs> but... It's like the performance that makes you go, okay, all right. You know what I mean? You, you, I believe what she's saying. You know, and we've got these, this great cinematography, these landscapes which they're filming on. You know, it is, there's a lot happening. There's a lot happening. There's a lion. <laughs> we get a lion up in the piece, which... I don't know how they got some of it. Like, I don't know how they got some of the scenes that we see. Because it is really, <laughs> really good. But then it's just the strategy as well. You know, because supposedly Yan never lost a battle. Right? Never lost a battle. Hailed as one of the, the best military minds of the time. And, like, there, there's this great scene which looks like it's you know a trap and it turns on its head and it's just oh when you watch it you are just man you feel exhilarated but just think of like the opening of gladiator you know we're in the forest and the fight happens or some of just the gladiatorial fights you know that really just got you infused this film does that stuff as well right which it's not an easy thing, right? When you think about all of the historical films that we've had, like Kingdom of Heaven, which, I mean, impressive in scale, but it just seemed to lack that soul, you know what I mean? But when, when you have this, right, when done right, when you have things like Gladiator, you know, like you just think of the TV show Rome, how great was that? You know, when it's done right, whew, it's impressive as hell. 
and medieval feels like it is in the vein of the classics, which, you know, it might seem it's a lofty thing to say, but I was, yeah, all the way through, I was just in this story. I was gripped. And that, I love that feeling, right? I love that feeling, being able to watch a film and not only, right, be, yo, I've not heard this story, right? But visually being impressed, being like, get great acting, just all of these things, editing, all of these things just come together, you know? It's really good. Like, you know, there is the bit with the eye, and it, you know, it takes a little while to get used to depth perception and all of that. So there are some bits where you do have to go, all right, I feel there's a little artistic license here, but all in all, people, medieval, you're going to be impressed, right, if you like. You know your 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 sword fighting and all of that kind of stuff. You know if you like Gladiator, right? If you liked, you know Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, right? Those are fantasy, obviously. But this will kind of invoke those same kind of feelings, right? This story, which is reality. It is going to grip you as much as some of the fantasy that we watch and enjoy. So, you know what I mean? I, look, you may have heard about this period in history. I haven't. I was gripped. I very much enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, people, right? And I think if you like the stuff I've referenced, I think you will enjoy medieval just as much as I did. So, yeah. Go check it out.